My 14 year old sister Ruby just informed me that it's weird to have your feet out in school nowadays. Is that true? It's very true. She said it's not 2017 anymore where your feet can just be out. <laughs> it's very true. People will bully you. If you have that's not true. Someone tell me that's not true. Sorry to disappoint zucchini, boobini, bobini, zennials, but the dogs are out, okay? 80% of the time and it's gonna stay that way. I'm on to Gen Z, by the way. I think they care about going viral more than anything. They make up crazy stuff like this and say things are out of fashion so millennial suckers like me share it and talk about it. And to that I say, cheers, mother liquor. You've outsmarted us all. We've been duped! Duped! Bamboozled! We've been speckled off. That's not even a word and I agree with you. Bad news and good news today. The bad news is it's the last show of the week so we can do a mandatory work retreat. The good news is today's episode takes us out on a five horn juicy river of pulpy goodness. Yay! (laughs) You guys sound like mice. Reese Witherspoon says she's taking inspo from Top Gun Maverick for Legally Blonde 3. The Kardashian-Jenners are fighting tooth and nail to restore Travis Scott at the top of the rap game. Winona and Ashley Judd were left out of their mother's will. And then, a new movie starring Joey King, Nicole Kidman, and Zac Efron. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Maverick has been so impressive and made such a mark on the hearts of Americans that liberal Reese Witherspoon says she might take some inspo from the flick for Legally Blonde 3. In a USA Today interview, she said, I'm still hoping that Legally Blonde 3 is gonna come together in the right way. It's just like Top Gun. They waited a long time to make another version of that movie, and I loved the nostalgia piece they incorporated in it. So definitely that gave us a lot of inspiration about what we would want to do with Elle Woods and make sure that we had all those same touchstones that mattered to people back then. I feel like these characters are my friends, so I safeguard them. I would never make the subpar, mediocre version of their story. Okay, so. Maybe she's not gonna take the patriotic parts as inspo, but she totally should. Elle Woods would definitely be a conservative. You think she'd be down with a man in a dress taking her spot in anything? I didn't think so. This has Kris Jenner written all over it. Travis Scott has landed a Vegas residency one year after his Astro World PR disaster. It's lit! It's lit! It's lit! It's lit! Is it lit, Travis? Is it? How do you keep your pants up when you're performing? It's incredible. Zook Nightclub in Las Vegas announced that Travis will be playing seven shows at their venue starting next month, and according to the press release, it will be a mind-bending, first-of-its-kind nightclub residency experience. By first-of-its-kind, do they mean it'll be the first time in a long time that people don't leave beat up or, I don't know, dead? I'm not in the room. Kylie and Chris are obviously working overtime in tandem with Travis's team, trying to get him back to the tier he was at before his deadly Astro World show. And all of these shows are gonna lead up to his new album so they can show people it won't be scary to see him live anymore. If anything goes wrong, I'll blame Chris. When we pull up, give me the loot. Give me the there are two opinions on why Naomi Judd left Winona and Ashley Judd completely out of her $25 million will. They are famous on their own accord and shouldn't be dependent on their mother, or this is an incredibly cruel thing for a mother to do. Good night, the Lord's coming. Good night, the Lord's coming. Good night. Rumor has it the girls are super hurt, but their teams refuse to comment on it. The will was repaired in 2017, and according to page six, her husband Larry Strickland has been appointed executor of her estate. This may be bad timing, but I think I should say I have also chosen to leave Winona and Ashley Judd out of my will. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, am I in trouble? (laughs) Oh, what? Netflix is so thirsty to maintain just a sliver of viewership, they decided to bring in the big guns. I'm talking a new movie with an actor for every generation. And it's a rom-com. Nicole Kidman, Joey King, and Zac Efron. If this flops, we burn Netflix to the ground. Due to legal reasons, I can't say that. But if it flops, we burn a picture of the Netflix building to the ground. Uh, Almost.
There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quo. Joey King doesn't do it for me as like someone I am obsessed with and love to follow and be influenced by, that sort of thing. I mean, we know that for me, that candle is currently being held by Sydney Sweeney, but Joey King is extremely talented. I don't have any hesitations about her being able to hold her own next to a legendary star like Nicole Kidman and a legendary hottie like Zac Efron. Stan has a small wiener. <laughs> What if it's like a young couple dating Joey and Zach and then Nicole is the psycho overbearing mother or something? That would be iconic. All marriages are complicated. Wait, according to Deadline, the story is set following a surprising romance which kicks off comic consequences for a young woman, her mother, and her movie star boss as they face the complications of love, sex, and identity. Okay, the word identity scares me. If this becomes some sort of weird, woke, gender, sexual orientation thing, I go back to my original point about burning Netflix, I mean, a picture of Netflix, to the ground. I'm burning this down. The TPUSA Creators Retreat starts today, so the next episode of Politics is going to be Tuesday. This is a great opportunity to catch up on previous episodes you've missed, as well as episodes of The Spillover. I was just told the other day by someone that they loved season two and haven't even started season one yet. Like, how is this possible? Do not knock season one just because it's season one. Episode one, season one, came out with a bang. I did not release a single flop. It is a solid first season. Season three launches tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, anywhere you get your podcast, as well as Rumble Now. Heart, thumbs up, shake your butt. Do you have any theories on the Judd sisters being left out of their mother's will? What about Zac Efron, Joey King, and Nicole Kidman doing a rom-com together? Or how about what Reese said about Top Gun setting a high bar for Legally Blonde 3? Oh, and is showing toes actually out for Gen Z, or is that made up? Post this episode to your stories with a poll and ask people if they've heard that's true, and then click save so we know it's real. We're back next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, and 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Clearly, Poplitics is best served visually, but you can also listen to Poplitics if you just want the audio. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, and more. Also, make sure that if you are listening to the podcast version, you leave us a five-star review. And don't forget, subscribe to Poplitics on YouTube.